what is UI UX? So um, let's let me just break out the terms. Uh, UI stands for user interface, and user UX stands for user experience. Um, in in very simple words, UI is basically how does it look, and UX is how does it feel. So uh, user interface, as as you guys might have you know heard or or like you know heard of what a, what an interface is. So interface is basically something that a user interacts with. It can be on a screen. It can be your laptop's keyboard. It can also be the the bottle cap. Um, you know anything that you interact with is an interface. And user experience is how how you feel or what emotions you go through as you you carry out that interaction. So um, one experience I'll give you an example of an experience. Say I'm typing on my keyboard. And certain times, there are different types of keyboards, and people have different experiences with their keyboards. So some some of them like raised keys, some of them like mechanical, some of them like a like a flat profile, butterfly switches, and uh, and it it depends on what sort of uh, you know experience you like. And the the interface part is basically how the keyboard is going to look, so what color is going to have, um, whether it's going to have black backlight on it, whether it's going to be white in color, or it's going to have a serif font on it, sans serif font. But this all depends on the interface. So, so it's just, they started, you know, exploring the problem more, and that's what that's exactly what UX is. It's about problem solving. It's about exploring a problem, researching about it, and and really just like finding out a solution. These are what this is what a UX designer does. We can see in the next slide what what it's composed of. So user interface is all about presentation, interactivity, and appearance. And user experience is about ease of use, user satisfaction, and user flow. So, so I'll, I'll explore these terms more as I go on in the workshop and also design the prototype. So, so hopefully we'll cover it then. Let's talk about a field, the field relevance. So, so why is this field, uh, you know, why am I talking about this right now? And why is there a lot of UI UX designers in the market at this point? So, so it's all because of the rise of digital app platforms. So, so places like you know, Play stores, um, Samsung stores. So all these places are basically marketplaces for digital apps, which which users download to to solve their their specific problems. So this could be like booking a cab, or this could be like ordering food online, um, playing music, or uh, streaming movies on your phone. And making notes, so all these different different you know uh, problems or like needs are are coming up, and there are a lot of companies who are you know investing investing their their you know energies into like building such such products. So so what's happening is there is there is a lot of different apps. If you look at the App Store, I think recently the App Store hit around one million apps, um, and the Play Store has hit around two million. So so you see the scale at which you know we are increasing the number of apps uh, in the in the app store and play stores and uh, this calls for you know which app is the best what app do i use to, to um, you know solve my problem and um, that's where ui ux comes in people people go like hey you know which app is better and they do it based on what experience they have with the app so, so they will be like, oh wait, dude, um, I used this app before, and you know it was very easy to use. I could understand what to do on this, and I was able to achieve what I wanted on this in very, very you know minimal way, and and it was very simple to use. That's how apps get get you know they become popular with such with such things, and that's why UI UX is becoming popular. It's because of the, the customer satisfaction that is the user is getting, and and the goals that are being solved with it. So, so this is the reason why more that you see more companies and and more startups applying UI UX, and you see a lot of job positions now, as it started back in 2010 when when Google and Apple started investing more in in design and the user interface, and uh, now there are like there is there are many many jobs on in this in this field, and and hopefully you know in the next coming years um, there is going to be an even more increase depending on the type of technology that we have. So this could be related to AR, VR, and, and there will be different there will be different user interfaces and experiences surrounding this. So so there's going to be a lot of changes happening 
definitely by the end of 2020, we are going to see a lot of increase in the use of AI in, in different apps and AR, VR as well. So, so this field has a lot of you know, relevance and an improvement. Um, um, yeah, so it's definitely something to look out for. And uh, okay, wait, I have I had a meme right now. <laughs> uh, that's that's a lot of apps. <laughs> so, so what what I was trying to say was there are, there are many apps on the on the App Store and and have to download. So what what they decided ultimately on is is what their experience is or what they or how how happy they felt while using it. And this is why UI UX has become important. It's because the user feels you know happy or they feel like oh you know. Okay, I think I felt good using this app, and I was able to ultimately solve my problem, and and that's how UI UX is becoming important. So so another another like few tips for for new you new people or new beginners to to look out for are are these three places. Uh, material design is is Google's uh, design guideline for for designing interfaces. Um, human interface guidelines is is there is Apple's. Um, you know, guideline on designing user interfaces and carbon design system is something that IBM uses in their in their products. So, so these all are are open source except except the human interface guidelines, and um, it's it's really good. It's a really good resource to you know check out for beginners. Let me take you guys through the uh, through the material design, so you guys can see what it is. Um, so I'm here, material.io. I put the link in in the description as well, so you guys can check it out. Um, it's it's a really comprehensive guide on on different types of components and different resources that that UI designers or UX designers need to look out for. Um, it's it's good to be aware of everything, you know, what all components you need, what are the what are the steps you need to follow while you're making a design. So, so let me let me just go over the components section and tell you what components are. So components are basically things on on the interface that you interact with. So as you as you might have you know known buttons or the nav bar, or or a uh, card, or you know a dialog, which would give you an option between confirming a delete action, um, check boxes, radio buttons. So all these are components, and the interface is ultimately built using this this component library. So it's it's really good documentation for new for beginners to read. And uh, I, I recommend any de developer or designer to, to read this, as it's as it's really good to to you know just like get to know what components you need where, and and gives you a good sense of okay how to design something. Um, there's also a lot of documentation on the code side. So if you go to say um, yeah, let's go to the sliders part as well. So if you go here, it says developer documentation, so you can find out. How can I get this component on, um, say, Android, the Android platform? So it, it gives you the code here as well. So it's all it's all available over here. You can you can check it out. Um, even for the other webs, even for the other guidelines, even for human interface guidelines, you can find the the developer components. I'm on the human interface guidelines page here. Um, if we go into iOS, you can see the the different principles that go into into this design guide, and um, you can view the you can view the different components here. So these are buttons on iOS. This is what buttons look like. Um, you can see what style of buttons are used where. Um, add contact buttons, so it could be a plus inside. And if you click over here for developer guidance, you can see the code that is used behind this sort of um, UI. And this can be used in Swift on Xcode. Um, this is carbon design system. It's it's again, you know, similar to the other ones. You'll find the same components here. Uh, this is the say this is a checkbox. So what style of checkboxes do you need to use over here, and, and when not to use them? So it gives you a difference between the circle style and a square style. The circle one, circle one is actually a radio button, and it gives you a reason where you only need one object or one item to be selected. And checkboxes where more than one items can be selected. So, so these guidelines or these these different uh, you know guidelines created by Google, Apple, and IBM help you you know um, help you decide which component to use where. Another good place for for UI designers to get inspiration from is uh, is Dribble. So, so 
Dribble is basically a, a place for for designers to post their work, and um, the reason why I didn't add it to my list before was because Dribble doesn't doesn't really tell you why you need something. It it only focuses on the visual aspect, so it it focuses more on the presentation. So it doesn't tell you okay why you need some sort of uh, UI or or why is it like this. It doesn't give you the reason. And and for beginners, this is not really a good a good place to start because Ribble also has some designs that uh, that 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 break the best practices. And this is this is something that you shouldn't follow. You should always try to go along the best practices, as that is what is commonly used, and and that is more intuitive and popular. So so Ribble is another is a good place. Another place is Behance, which is again similar to Ribble, but it focuses more on um you know why so so dribble was okay what and this is more about why so this is for a smart home so over here you can see you know design process you can see um, what the what the designer the ui ux designer went through while creating this ui and there was first a research phase then the analysis then analyzing the different user needs and personas creating an information architecture and and sketches and prototyping it testing it and designing it so so this part that you can see first the first six points are are basically what a ux designer would do so the ux designer basically researches he analyzes the different users he looks at the different user needs um here's an example of a user persona so it's basically uh, you know information about a user what their user type is um what what goals do they have what are their frustrations um then we get to the why framing stage which is as you can see it's very similar to uh, our screen but it's 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 more like it's a very skeleton version of it so it's basically wires as as in why framing to to represent the final screen and this is usually used during the the prototyping stage and what this is what the ux designer would create which is a, a wireframe that would depict all the different components required and uh, and you know pieces that would solve the user problem uh, next we have the information architecture which is basically uh, the overview of the entire app so it gives you uh, a list of different screens on your app or um, what sort of screens would you need and this is useful while you create a flow so so as the developer or or you know as you organize your different screens this would the information architecture would help you organize it better and and fix any sort of rep, repeating points or or places where you could go into a loop so so that's what information architecture is useful for um the colors and fonts are basically the what colors you're using this is more of a ui ui designer role um and and sometimes the colors can also depend on your brand um then the fonts fonts is also about the ui that's so that's more of a ui designer role where the ui designer decides what sort of fonts or typography do i need to use on the on the user interface um what sort of rounding do i use do i use gradients on it do i do i make my buttons rounded or do i make them squared um so this is this is whatever the the ui designer would decide um then it's just some screenshots of the app so that was it for part 1 i hope you guys liked it In the second part I'm going to talk about Figma which is a design tool used for designing and planning interfaces and give a walk through designing a small sign up flow explaining the basic operations of Figma. Thanks a lot for watching and see you there.